Hello, my name is Michael Smith. Uh, this is the second to last, I think, in the basic procedural texture tutorials. Uh, what we've done so far, we looked at what is a procedural texture, we looked at texture coordinates and different kinds of texture coordinates, we looked at how to manipulate texture coordinates to change what your texture is doing in terms of scaling and rotating and squishing. Uh, we also looked at the built-in procedural textures that come with Blender, or at least the ones I find most useful. Now we're actually going to figure out how to repeat something with variation in a tiled pattern. This is a really common uh, feature that you want out of your textures. You might have wood flooring, which is uh, tiled with different you know, um, bits of wood that are next to each other. You might have cracks in mud. There's a whole bunch of variations of these where what you wanna do is do one thing, but do it over with variations. And we're going to do that now. So in this tutorial, we're gonna show regular tiling, uh, essentially a checkerboard pattern um, or similar. How do you do that? And then in the next tutorial, we're gonna show irregular tiling. Um, so cracks in mud or something of that nature. Okay, so with that background, uh, we're going to Blender. I'm doing this in three. It'll look a bit different if you do it in the two series, but everything I'm doing, I think, is in both or almost everything. Shouldn't really matter. Uh, we're going to do general. As with the other tutorials, I'm going to go to shading. Uh, as with the other tutorials, we're going to get rid of the, the cube, click it, uh, left click it, select delete. I'm going to go to add mesh plane so I get a nice flat plane. I'm going to click on that, click seven so I can look at it. I'm gonna click on this button, get the material. So I'm using the default material. I'm gonna to go to the top left corner here and drag and close those because I'm not using them. And I'm gonna do add input texture coordinate. And I'm going to use the UV texture coordinates. Although this will work with things like generated. We're just gonna use UV first. Okay, quick reminder, uh, if you either skip the tutorials or uh, you don't remember them. Uh, so this is producing a tuple X, Y, Z. In the case of UV coordinates, Z is always zero, so it's just X and Y. When we plug that into base color of the material, that's going to red for X, green for Y, blue for Z. Uh, you don't see blue because there is no Z, um, but you can see that along the X axis, conveniently colored red here and red in the screen here, um, we go from black to fully red. Along the Y axis, we go from black to fully green, and along the diagonal, we mix the two. So. Um, what we want to do here is take a procedural texture and we're going to make a really a really simple one and then we want to repeat it so instead of just having one texture we want to take that texture and repeat it across the screen both in this direction and that direction okay so first let's make our texture so we're going to do a really simple texture we're going to do a circle so we're going to do add vector uh, sorry converter vector math the first thing we're going to do is go here and go to distance so what this is computing is the distance of this coordinate from 0, 0, 0. Since z is always 0, it's really just the xy distance. And if you look at this, that makes sense. So the distance is 0 in the corner, because it is 0, 0, and then goes to uh, one, uh, 1 out here, or I guess 0. 0.5, and a bit bigger over there, as you get farther away. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is add a uh, distance, right? Because we... To get a circle, we basically want to color everything within a certain radius white and everything outside that radius black. So the way we're going to do that is go to add converter math, plug this in here, and we're going to go to less than, less than 0.5. Uh, so now what happens, I lied earlier, it's not 0.5, it is 1, 1. Uh, so <laughs> if we go less than, than 0.5, the circle ends halfway there, and if we grow this, it goes all the way out to the edge. Okay. The other problem is, uh, yeah, this isn't a circle. It starts at zero, zero. It's centered on zero, zero. We want to move it to the center. So you'll remember from the tutorial in manipulating coordinates, uh, what we can do is just move the coordinate system so that zero, zero is in the middle instead of at the left. So we're going to go to add converter vector math. We're going to use the add. And as you remember, what we want to do is move the zero, zero coordinate system to the middle. Uh, so if we subtract 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that will make this corner, which was 0, 0, now minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5, which will effectively make this 0, 0, which will move the circle there. So we're going to make this minus 0 0.5 on the x, minus 0 0.5 on the y, uh, radius of 0 0.5. Now we have a circle that takes up the space. This is our pattern. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to do control G. That creates what's called a node group. So you see like our texture vanished, the other nodes vanished, and we got this new uh, picture that just has the nodes we created. Uh, I'll show you how that works. What you do is you go click this little button. So now we're out of our node 
And in our original picture, uh, we have this thing called a node group. Uh, you click on this to name it, I'm gonna call it circle. And what this does is it just takes those nodes and hides them under one name uh, so that we don't have to look at all of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that. So now we have the circle. Okay, um, so now what we wanna do is have a texture that has all these circles, uh, or sorry, has many of these circles repeated in all directions. Uh, we can't do that with the texture we have now. So if we go to add converter vector math scale, so you'll remember this from the manipulating coordinates tutorial. Um, if we grow uh, the size of this space, uh, right? So it's zero to one now, if we multiply everything by, well, I don't know, 10. Now uh, it multiplies each value by 10. So instead of going zero to one, now it goes zero to 10, zero to 10. We just have one circle. So that's not very helpful. And the reason for that, if I take this vector and plug it back into the base color, uh, is that all that's happening is instead of this uh, value going from zero to one, it now goes zero to 10. When we compute the circle, we're coloring in everything smaller than 0.5 from the offset 0 0.5, 0 0.5 distance wise. Um, and so it cuts off the circle here and then all of this is just farther away. So we draw nothing there. If we wanna repeat the circle, what we need is that original pattern We'll go back to the not scaled one. Uh, they're gonna look very similar. Uh, the color doesn't show you above the value of one. Uh, so once it gets to full red, it just stays that way. But uh, we want this pattern, but we want it to repeat 10 times. So if we make scale this by 10, I wanna see it go from zero to one and then go from zero to one again. And I don't just want that to happen in this picture. Uh, if I want it to happen for negative numbers as well. So um, what I'm gonna do to show that, I'm gonna add, and again, from manipulating coordinate systems, I'm gonna add converter vector math, and we're going to move the center uh, up here instead of to the bottom left, zero, zero to the center. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So out of here, this is just going point from zero, zero to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, negative 0.5, negative 0.5. We're then multiplying it by 10. So it goes to five and negative five, five. To quickly explain the colors, this looks like we're, what we're used to, but these other corners look weird. That's because when Blender shows a number as a color, negative numbers just show as black. So here, X and Y are both negative, so it's just black. Here, X is negative, so we just see green. Here, Y is negative, so we just see red. So that's what's going on there. Uh, okay, but that's not what we want. We want this little corner, the little one one corner. We want that repeated over and over. So how are we gonna do that? What we're gonna do is we're going to do add converter vector math. Um, if you're familiar with modulo, you may be surprised I'm not doing, using modulo. It's because it doesn't do what I want in the negative space, uh, but we're effectively doing modulo. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to divide. So let's say we want each circle to be two by two. Uh, so what we're gonna do is divide the coordinates we have, whatever they are, by two first. Uh, all that's doing is having it. So this is like undoing the scale. That's not very useful. But now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a uh, convector, yeah, add converter vector math, and we're gonna do what's called floor. So what floor is going to do, as soon as I find it, there we go, brain is caught up. Floor is gonna remove the remainder. So uh, if this division brings us to, let's say 1 1.5, 1 1.5, uh, then we're just gonna get the one one. So effectively, this is giving us the row and column. So if we're at zero, zero, we get zero, zero. If we're two, two, we get one, one, et cetera, right? So given that our rows and columns are each a size of two, this gives us the row and column. And then the next thing we wanna do is get the bottom left corner of this particular square. The way we're gonna do that is just multiply again by the size of the row and the column. So if we're at row one, one, column one, we wanna multiply by two and two, and our bottom position is two, two. That's the bottom left. So add converter vector math, multiply two, two. Okay, there we go. So now what we've done is we've identified the bottom left corner. Um, and this, this will now give us just that bottom left corner. And no matter where we are in the cell of this, of this repeating tiling pattern, we always get the position of the bottom left corner. So now what we want to do is we want, uh, the whole purpose of this, we want a repeating pattern uh, where we start at zero and go to two, start at zero, go to two, and repeat that over and over for each tile. How do we do that? Well, we have the bottom left corner. So all we need to do is take the position we're at and subtract the bottom left corner. So we're going to add converter vector math. Oh, sorry. We're gonna go to subtract. We're gonna put this in the top. We're gonna put this in the bottom. And now 
boom. So now the color, uh, right? So if you're somewhere in the middle of the square, let's say at one, one, the column and the row are going to be zero, zero. Uh, so it's just going to subtract zero, zero, right? From one, one, the bottom left corner is gonna be zero, zero. But if we're up here and we're at, let's say three, three, which should be about here, it's gonna find the tile. The off the tile is gonna be, uh, the row and column gonna be one, one. The bottom corner is gonna be two, two, because each of these tiles is two by two. And then it's gonna subtract two, two from three, three. And now we get a color that's in the middle of this tile. So we go from zero, zero to two, two. Okay, so based on that, what we expect and what I hope will happen, if we put our circle texture, our really simple procedural texture, and we put that in, what's going to happen, oops, put that in, there we go. It's going to draw a circle uh, in every single point. Something's not right. Hold on. Oh, because it's negative. I see. No, this is right. Sorry. So um, this is going to draw a circle at the bottom left corner of a two by two tile. This is zero, zero tiling uh, across the entire space. So here you go. And in the negative directions as well. Okay, so that's the first part. That's how you tile. The second part is how do I do something unique to each of these? So uh, for your procedural texture, in this case, we're going to do the simplest thing. We're going to add the radius and change that. So sorry, what I did here, I click on this little icon here that opens up our, our node. And then to add a new input parameter, uh, what we do is drag this empty circle to the thing I want to change. So the thing I want to change is this radius, this threshold. If I drop it there, it'll name it threshold based on that property. What I can do, if you see this little caret here, click on that, uh, then go down to group. And I'm going to rename this to radius because that's what it is. Okay. Now, if I click this little button to go out of the node group, we still have a circle, but it has a radius. And you can see if I make that bigger or smaller, that makes the circle bigger or smaller. Okay, so how do I make it different for each tile? Well, uh, what I'm gonna do from our uh, built-in textures tutorial, there are two random noise generators, uh, three actually that you might wanna use. We'll try two of them. Go to texture. First, we're gonna do white noise. So if you remember from the built-in textures, this is gonna produce just a random value. Now, what we don't wanna do is take this vector, this position, the position we're drawing the circle on, put it in here, and then just put this value into the radius. What this is gonna do is create a completely random value for radius for every point in this coordinate system. And that's just going to randomly change what radius is at every point and give you this, this mess. Um, the other problem is it's random based on the input. So the random value is gonna be the same in every tile because you're passing it the same input. So zero, zero uh, here, sorry, here is gonna be the same as zero, zero here. And the random value for radius is gonna be identical. We want something that is consistent across everything in the tile and different for each tile. Well, the easy answer is the bottom left corner of the tile, right? That's gonna be different for every tile. Um, and it's going to be one value across the whole tile. So we're gonna take this, which is the bottom left corner. We're gonna plug it in there and there you go. So now, let me recenter with seven and we'll scroll out. Um, if I scale this up, here we go, completely random dots. Um, another thing you could do, so this is doing completely random. There's no relationship between any circle and the circle next to it. And if we scale out, it's just noisy. Um, but we can use other noise to do uh, something more interesting. So let's say we delete this here. Uh, oh, that's kind of fun. Uh, we're just putting the, the value in there for the radius. Uh, so let's do texture noise. So now if you remember how this works, this is going to produce a random value, but the one that is similar to the one next to it. So along a gradient. And if you look at this, they're gonna be different sizes. Let's change the scale of this so it's more obvious. Okay, there we go. They're different sizes, but instead of them being completely random, they're related to hills and peaks in this underlying um, noise texture. So they're related to each other. Small things gradually grow from small to big in all directions. Big things grow from big to small. So there you go. There's other textures you could throw in there, but that's the basic idea. So there's a whole bunch of reasons we might do this for things like if you've got a, a, a wood floor, you want to tile it. We'll talk about how you can do this so that it would look more like a wood floor texture. Um, you tile your pattern, whatever it is, and then you have parameters in the pattern that let you fiddle with the wood grain or the color or, or the size of the radius, whatever. Um, 
and you use the position of each of those cells to generate a random number, either completely random or random numbers that are related to each other so that you can subtly change each one of those so that they don't just repeat the same thing over and over. And that's the basic technique. So that's the end of this. Next one, I'll show you how to do that with irregular tiles. Thanks for watching.